Hello everyone. So I'm Dr. Princey from Delhi University. I'll be telling you about a tool named as BLAST provided by NCBI website for alignment purposes for basically sequence alignment. Okay, so its full form is basic local alignment search tool. Basically, before going to the tool, we need to understand what do you mean by sequence alignment? So you can align any kind of sequences. You can align DNA sequences. You can align RNA. You can align protein sequences. Okay. And typically aligning this sequence helps you to infer the evolutionary relationships between different organisms. So I can align my DNA sequence with another organism DNA sequence and I can know the percentage of similarity between these two DNA sequences. So it is basically residue to residue alignment to determine the similarity or homology between the two sequences okay so there are two different types of categorizations first is on the basis of number of sequences which we are aligning so pairwise alignment and multiple sequence alignment second is on which way the alignment has been done which is global alignment or local alignment so talking about pairwise and multiple alignment, as the name itself suggests, pairwise alignment means we are aligning a pair of sequences. So basically we have two sequences which we are aligning. One would be behaving as query, another one would be behaving as subject. Whereas in multiple sequence alignment, you have more than two sequences which you can align. So it's very clearly visible in the diagram. If you see the left panel, the black and white image is the pairwise alignment. You have a query, then you have a subject aligned below the query. In the right panel, there is multiple alignment in which you have some five sequences aligned one below the other to know the similarity pattern or the dissimilarities or the gaps or the deletions or the insertions. So any mismatch will denote either there was a deletion, there was an addition or there was a substitution of a base pair. Okay, so these are different parameters of multiple and pairwise alignment next is your global and local alignment so global alignment is basically when we align a sequence from first residue to the last residue and basically it is being used for sequences which are nearly equal in size and in local alignment we generally perform for searching the local conserved area so if you have a one kilo base of sequence and you want to know that out of this one kilo base what if 100 base pairs is identical to another 100 base pairs so what is that particular conserved region of similarity so we look for local conserved regions of similarity in the case of local alignments okay so it is mainly focused to identify conserved residues in different sequences and it is usually performed for dissimilar length sequences okay then talking about blast it is finding local similarity so the uh, full form itself suggests that it's a local alignment between your primary biological sequences which is your dna rna or protein so we can compare any of the sequence whether it is known or unknown to the already submitted sequences in the databases in your ncbi ddbj and embl you have three databases which are uh, you know which are actually integrated and they share their data so you can basically do any uh, use any database okay so we will be using ncbi database to search a sequence and align it with the already submitted sequences in the database so the sequence which is being searched is called as query and the database to which we are searching will be called as a subject so it is one of the fundamental ways to learn about a different gene or protein and this tool was very first you know discovered in 1990s by old school et al okay and 
this is what I just explained that blast searching allows the user to choose one sequence which is query and perform its sequence alignment with the entire database which is termed as target actually it's a pairwise sequence alignment and a local alignment okay and million of alignments can be aligned in blast so ideally it is pairwise but it will be done separately with each entry in the database so you get multiple results okay and the algorithm used is your smith waterman algorithm so this was the first part of my video describing very briefly about what is blast and sequence alignment second part of my video would deal with different types of blast which you can perform thank you good evening everyone so welcome to the part two of this small lecture of blast so in the last video we had spoken about a very brief introduction what exactly blast is it is a local alignment tool which does pairwise alignment with the entire database present in your ncbi because we are actually using ncbi to demonstrate okay and then we stopped at what are the different types of blast so where we have five types of basic programs in blast we have blast n blast p blast x t blast n and t blast x we'll be discussing one by one so blast n means nucleotide blast so here you provide a dna sequence in the form of in the form of agct or any any kind of dna sequence whether it's any gene sequence or its whole genome dna sequence you provide a dna sequence as a query and your program which is blast n will be searching against the dna database only and number of searches would be once so once it will be taking your query dna and it will be searching against the dna all the dna submitted in the database and it will return you with the different results which we call as hits okay so you can compare both these strands of dna query against a dna database that's a simplest for form of blast which we use then next is your protein blast so in this you add a protein sequence that is in the form of amino acids and it searches this protein query against the protein database okay so again the number of searches performed is only one because it is searching protein against protein third is your blast x what happens in blast x we provide a sequence which is a dna sequence but when it is searched it is searched against a protein database so when we have to convert a dna into a protein you first convert dna to rna you know the central dogma dna is first get uh, getting converted into messenger rna and then messenger that is transcription and then messenger rna translates into a protein okay and your translating of messenger rna to protein it involves a triplet code so three nucleotides they combine to form a codon and this particular uh, three nucleotides or triplet code it codes for a particular amino acid okay so what blast x does it basically translates your dna query into six possible reading frames okay and then six times for each reading frame it searches the database for protein for that particular reading frame okay so first it will translate your dna into all six possible proteins which can be uh, you know the possible outcomes of translation and then afterwards all these six types of proteins are translated or sorry are searched against the protein database okay now what are open reading frames and what are these you know why we are calling this is as fixed six number that i'll be dealing uh, after completing all these types okay so the number of searches here comes to be six next is your t blast n so t stands for translated so again here we upload a query in the form of protein sequence and it translates your database sequence which is in the form of dna 
into the possible proteins which can be six reading frames so the number of searches again here is six okay so t blast 10 is using is actually translating every dna sequence in the database on the contrary in the blast text our query was getting translated okay but in t blast n our database gets translated and our query is already a protein so the number of searches is again number six last type is t blast x so here what happens we put the query sequence in dna we put the uh, we select the database also as dna so it translates your query and database both into all the six possible reading frames so you get six frames here you get six frames here in the query as well as in database so total searches would be six into six that comes to be 36 database searches okay so it will search it will perform the search 36 times so if you just do the product rule of probability so 6 into 6 it is 36 okay then actually what do we mean by these open reading frames so for example if this is your um, a stretch of sequence okay open reading frames basically any sequence which starts with start codon and stop with stop codon would be a open reading frame okay which can be possibly coding for a particular protein so you have these triplets so either you can read it like this you can start your reading frame from the first nucleotide so first triplet would be ATG then second triplet would be ACA and third would be GAT but in some cases there will be reading from second nucleotide okay so if I read from second nucleotide then my triplet or the frame of reading changes so the now the triplets are TGA CAG and ATT so consequently the type of amino acids in the protein also changes okay additionally if I read from third nucleotide again the frame of reading changes so for every strand of DNA you have three possible reading frames you have frame one you have frame two you have frame three if we talk about fourth frame to one then there in the fourth frame your reading pattern does not change only the first triplet is excluded otherwise the frame of reading remains the same okay so for the positive strand you have three frames likewise for the negative strand you have three frames so in total there are six open reading frames which are available for a particular dna sequence and according to this only we have determined here the number of blast searches happening okay so this was all about a very uh, brief info about the types of blast and what is blast wait for the part three for more detailed information thank you